boy, oh boy, oh boy, it's cold out there today. It is about minus 15 degrees Celsius here in Niagara Falls, Ontario. It's towards the end of January, but I really want to get out in the shed today to update everyone on a project that I think a lot of people are interested in. That project is the 3D printed dash for my Suzuki DR650. I know it's been a long time working on this project, but I really have a renew it, renewed energy in this new year. So I want to bring you up to speed on where I am today. So why don't you sit back, grab yourself something warm to drink, and enjoy Dino's Tinker Shed. And we'll talk about this little guy a little bit more. See you in a minute. Okay, where am I today? Well, let's start with where we've come from. So, here is our aluminum dash. There are some things I really like about this. The overall size of it was a good size. It wasn't too big, but it had enough room inside to mount a small four fuse fuse panel, a, a standard a relay, four prong relay, and of course a couple uh, power supplies there, USB and a 12 volt standard cigarette lighter type plug. I had room for a grounding uh, stud and overall it wasn't, wasn't too huge. I wanted to keep it as compact as possible so it didn't look ridiculous on the front of the motorcycle. One thing that um, I worried about a little bit is because it's made out of metal, even though it's aluminum, it's still somewhat heavy. It, I, I don't have the full weight here, but it, it's not terribly, terribly heavy, but it's not as light as I'd hoped it would be. It's never been a problem, but it's something that just seems like a lot of weight sticking out in front of the bike, and I would have some issues with the dashboard vibrating a little bit at highway speeds, around 50 miles an hour, 80 kilometers an hour. I could see the headlight bouncing a little bit on road signs, especially at night. So I wanted to address that. The other thing was, a lot of people maybe don't have the metalworking tools that they would need to make something like this. You need rivet guns. I used Clecos on there to register the different parts. And you need drill motors, some saws, some different metalworking tools to make a project like this. And honestly, the cost of aluminum is quite expensive. If you had to buy all of the sheet aluminum, you know, you'd probably pay maybe 50 to $60 to get that amount of aluminum. Whereas I just used old road signs. I have a friend that sort of collects them. So the idea of a 3D printed dash made a lot of sense to me. It'd be lighter, more cost effective, and possibly more accessible for people who have a 3D printer or who want to spend a few hundred dollars and have a tool like that in their shop for prototyping the way that I'm doing it. And this led me to this prototype here that was in the last video. My friend printed this out for me. I finally had the time to glue it together as one rigid piece. And it does have a dash panel that I'll probably put on with hinges or I'm even thinking maybe rare earth magnets might be enough to hold something like this in place for easier access into the sort of service area there. Overall, I was quite pleased with the results. I glued this together with super glue. It's quite rigid, surprisingly. And even though it's printed um, out of PLA, which is like apparently the cheapest material you can print something out of, it really does feel quite rigid. And I think once the prototyping is done, printing this out of something a little more durable will probably be sufficient to support this thing. Um, one thing I noticed is when I went to fit this up, I had a couple areas that uh, needed some tweaking. One was along this edge. It was a little bit too long and it was hitting the fork stanchions. And also up top here where I've got the cutout for the uh, speedometer, 
the ignition needed some relief in here as well. And as I got printing, um, you know, there's a couple other things that I noticed. One is um, when I did the initial design, I left a little bit of space. I didn't zero out my, my finger joints on this edge in particular right here, which leads to look just kind of crappy. It's, I think, pretty strong, but it just looks bad. So I sat down with Tinkercad and redesigned some of the parts, and I came up with this piece here. So you can see that I've added relief for the ignition tumblers, and I've even smoothed out the arc on this to make it look a little better. Here was the issue that I had with not zeroing out the um, the uh, box joint on the side panel and I remedied that in the second panel that I printed over here so it's nice and smooth it prints much better and I also added a radius on the back edge here for it to look a little more professional now, I'm still not hundred percent satisfied with where we are at this point but it's looking pretty good one thing I also did was on the original black piece, I was noticing that the base plate was starting to cup a little bit. It was starting to warp. So what I did is I doubled the wall thickness of it and I stepped it up against the sidewalls with the thought that it would give more glue surface to glue this thing together with whatever product I decide to do. So I thought that overall was pretty good in terms of design changes. And I went ahead and printed out the white model that you see here. And again, it's out of PLA. I just chose white because I thought, well, I got a white bike. Let's see what it would look like in white. But there's also a few other changes that I decided to make along the way that relate to this, but aren't 100% the same. The first change that I made to the bike that isn't part of the 3D dash is the headlight. Now, if you have watched my channel, you know that I've upgraded this old headlight here to a Cyclops LED bulb, H4 bulb. This is an amazing upgrade for the DR650. And it turns this old tired halogen light fixture into just a great laser beam that cuts through the darkness. The challenge I'm having here is because the actual housing, the fixture is made of glass and steel, it's heavy. In fact, it weighs about 684 grams, which is about a pound and a half that I have hanging out here on my dashboard. The other thing is the control unit for it takes up a fair bit of additional space within the dashboard assembly itself. This is the controller here. It's already fairly tight with all the wiring it has to pack in there. And this has always made it just a little bit challenging to fit in. So what are my solutions? Well, I decided to upgrade to a fully LED light package like this. This has some kind of polycarbonate lens on the front instead of glass. It has the controllers built right into it and it has an aluminum heat sink on the back. This weighs in around 360 grams, so half the weight of the original Suzuki mount. And the thing that I like about it is the mounting bracket itself is an all aluminum cross brace design that I think is going to offer support for the 3D printed dash. And I do like the fact that you can pivot the light up or down quite easily with this, given the way that it mounts with uh, a fixed stud on top and then sort of a, a glide notch built into the bottom so you can pivot it up and down. So I think it's gonna give me some good adjustability. The other thing is I can eliminate the controller right here for my Cyclops bolt. I like that because it's going to tidy it up a little bit underneath. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. The next change is going to be about this. This is an automotive relay 
and I used one of these in my original dash here to take key power and turn it into direct battery power up to the fuse panel. It's a wise thing to do if you want keyed power or you have anything with a fairly high load on it. You don't really want to run it off the switched power under the dash there that comes from factory. It's, it's not really strong enough to say power an air compressor, but a relay will allow you to use power straight from the battery up to your fuse panel and then out to your accessories on either side of the dash. And it works really good. The only challenge I have with this is physically it's fairly large. And again, I want to try to keep things both smaller and lighter. And I originally just drilled a hole through here um, and bolted it to the back of the dash here, which just to me doesn't look as professional as maybe it should or it could. I got online and I found a micro relay, a 30 amp micro relay, and you can see the size difference here between them. It is quite substantial. And the trigger wire gauges are smaller as well. They're not as heavy, so they're a little easier to work with when you want to join your trigger wire from the key to activate the load wires that go out to your fuse panel. The other thing I like about this is they have built-in rails, so you can join multiple units of this together, but more importantly for me is I think I can copy those and 3D print them. So instead of having to bolt this, I'll just be able to slide it into the inside of the dashboard and it'll be a much cleaner, more professional look when I'm done. I'm quite excited about that. Now, I just decided to use the same four post fuse panel that, uh, that I used in the original dash. It's about the smallest that I could get. I really wanted to get one with micro blade fuses. I just couldn't find one on Amazon. And these components that I'm buying here are all available on Amazon. I'm going to include the links to all of this stuff when I get the dashboard finalized so that if you want to build one of these, you can just go and buy the exact same components that I'm using here. When I do finally post this, you can of course modify it and make it your own and add holes or whatever you want. And that's one thing that I need to talk about is the support brace for the headlight is just ever so slightly wider than the factory Suzuki headlight. So I've had to reduce the, uh, the pads here, the spacer pads that I've got printed so that it matches this. So what I'll probably do when I'm done is I'll have two different versions. One that if you want to use the LED bulb that I'm using here and the other if you want to use the factory DR bulb uh, and fixture assembly. I'll be able to provide two different files for that I think when I'm done. Now I am a long way from being done with this. There's a bunch of different things I still have on my mind to get this thing both functional and uh, completed, but then I'm going to take a look at it from a functionality standpoint and start to refine the design a little bit so that when it's done, it's something that you would be proud to have on your DR650. I'm thinking I might even want to maybe move this out to give a little more space. I'm just going to play with it a little bit as we go along. I'm just going to say this, is when I'm done with this, you're just going to be able to get it for free. I've contemplated selling this, making this, all kinds of things. I've had great, great feedback from everybody out there about what am I going to do when I'm done with this. Well, I'm just going to give it to the DR650 community. My YouTube channel, although I do make a little bit of money off of it, is really about the enjoyment of making these videos and the enjoyment of riding my DR650 or my snowmobile or whatever. So when I'm done with this, well, it'll just be a gift to the DR community. Okay, I think that about wraps up today's video. Like I say, it's just a bit of an update. And as I work on this, I'm gonna spend a few weeks working, produce another update video, 
as I said in the last, if you see something that you think makes sense to modify this, please put it down in the comments. I love reading the comments. I read every one of them. I don't always reply to all of them because I might be on my phone somewhere out, out in a boat and I forget to reply, but I do honestly read them all. And you know, you've helped me already to get to this point. So until next time, I hope that you're enjoying your time with your shop. Hope you enjoy the content and I hope to see you soon here on Dino's Tinker Shed. You tinker easy. Bye for now.